Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about 10 ways to simplify your life. Do you feel overwhelmed and exhausted a lot? Is your to-do list a mile long with no end in sight? Would you like to quit going a million miles a minute and gain some peace? Learn 10 tips to simplify your life as we continue our month focusing on being your most awesome self. Are you ready to clear your clutter and share your gifts with the world? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join me on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out as I teach you how to navigate the waters to declutter your life, get organized, and become more mindful. I'm an award-winning professional organizer, author, and certified life coach, and I destroy the box and examine clutter in all areas. Every episode, I'll give you take action steps that you can easily apply to your life. Come on, let's get started. Today's episode was inspired because the more I do this work on myself, with clients, with family and friends, the more I see how important it is to simplify in all areas of your life. And simplifying your life doesn't necessarily mean minimalism. It has to work for you. If it doesn't work for you, you're not going to do it. When I think of the word minimalism, I have to admit, I kind of equate that with sterile, kind of a modern look. I don't like modern. It's just not how I am. I would choose. I can say, oh, that's kind of a cool modern house. Wouldn't be interested in it. And to me, modern and minimalism and sterile all kind of mesh up together. And I'm not interested in that. I am not a minimalist. I know a minimalist would walk into my home and be like, oh my gosh. I also know I don't have a ton of clutter because I do this for a living and I see what is out there. I want photos on the wall. I don't mind cat hair on the carpet. I'm, you know, I've heard people say, simplify your life. Don't have plants, don't have pets. Ugh, I can't imagine a life like that. It's not for me. Someone else may choose to do that. And many times, less is more. So we've just got to find what works for you. So downsizing, simplifying, what can you do? A uh, good example of this probably would be dishes. A minimalist would probably say, hey, one set of dishes isn't enough. I have what I call our everyday dishes. And when we got married, we got a set of dishes. I didn't want china. I didn't want silver, any of that. I love Vietri, which is Italian. So it's Italian pottery. So I have a good set of dishes. And when we have parties, that's what I use. And I have a set of everyday dishes. That works for me. And that's simplified because I don't have 20 sets of dishes. And as you know with me, doing less is so much more than the physical stuff. That's why I do this podcast. I don't want us to get caught up or think that the physical stuff is all there is. Some decisions are really hard for me, but the more I do this, the easier it became. And I keep finding ways every year where I can simplify one of the practices that I do is at the beginning of the year, figure out where I can save money. Tony and I will talk about our budget and where can we cut corners and, and really not sacrifice anything. One of the awesome things he did, I think we did this, if he did this when we were dating or after we got married, but I don't have a cell phone anymore. I use Google Voice and I know some things have changed with this. So I know, for instance, a few years ago, the app that we had on my iPad, so I talked to people through my iPad, or I talked to them through my computer, although with my work, I use video a lot more. He set it up, the little app, we had to change it a few years ago, but I don't have a cell phone. That's one less thing. First of all, it saved us my cell phone bill, which I didn't think was bad, with Sprint was over $1,000 a year, close to, it was like $80 a month by the time I quit. So just under a thousand. So that's already saved us four or $5,000. Any rate, so I go through and how can we save money? And what I've started to do at the same time as looking at our budget for the years, where in my life can I simplify? 
and I make it fun. It's something that I can enjoy. And like, let's look at everything that's going on. What can I do to simplify? Here are my 10 suggestions. And I could give a lot more, guys, but we're just going to limit this to 10 because then the podcast would go on forever. Number one, give yourself permission to simplify your life. We have kind of this busyness in our American culture. I know I have listeners all over the world and please send me an email. I'd love to know about other cultures, but I'm going to talk how it is for being an American. And, and this might be true of other countries as well. Just because we're busy doesn't mean we're getting anything done. And we're kind of in that busy mode. It's just kind of mind racing around. We might be physically moving a lot, but maybe it's on stuff that really isn't important. Maybe we're taking that busyness on stuff we really don't care about. Give yourself the okay to simplify your life and do what you choose. Give yourself permission to say no. Give yourself permission not to attend every PTA meeting. Give yourself permission to put yourself first. What do you need to give yourself permission to do this year? Number two, clear clutter. Okay, guys, it's a podcast about clutter. I still have to include it. I'm going to hammer it home as much as I can. And you know I'm talking about every area in your life because my definition of clutter is this. Clutter is anything that prevents you from creating the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Beginning of the year is a great time to clear your physical clutter. You can go through all your holiday stuff before you put it away. Or perhaps you pick a room to do. It's a new year. You get motivated to do it. Commit the month to clearing some physical clutter. Examine your relationships. Which relationships drain and exhaust you? Who is it that you find your tummy clenching into knots when you have to see them? How about your emotional clutter? What would you like to let go of? Do you find yourself with a lot of anger, jealousy, sadness, frustration, unhappiness? How can you move forward? What changes do you need to make to your health? Stretching more? Exercising more? Eating better? What are you passionate about? How can you clear your spiritual clutter to figure this out? What are your priorities in clearing your clutter? Number three, plan your meals. Take the time to figure out meals for the week. I'm a fan of cooking extras so you can have some leftovers. I'm going to share this funny story. When my husband and I, I think we're dating and, you know, we don't eat a ton of meat. And so I kind of cracked up the first time I cooked him chicken and then I cooked him steak and it was both raw in the center. And I love my handsome husband because he just didn't skip a beat and was like, oh, you know, it's not cooked. At any rate, he at one point said, I don't eat leftovers. And I was like, not on my watch, buddy. And so save yourself some time. If you plan, then that can also save you money because you can say, okay, well, I can plan this and look at what sale is on sale at the grocery store. And so you can throw in saving some money there. Get creative with how you can get a few items every week and, every week and make different meals. Here's a magazine, a cooking magazine, and it, or it might be a uh, real simple. Was that the uh, real? That's Kale. Oh, gosh, I can see the magazine. That's the real simple is the magazine that they do a thing where like, here's the grocery list and you can get five meals out of that. And so you don't have to buy a bunch of things and they get creative with that. So that's something you can have fun with. Use Pinterest for that. Pinterest is great. You know, if you're visual, they have lots of things you can search for and find and do. There are cooking magazines or apps out there. And again, make this a fun thing. If we make something fun, then you don't have that issue. Oh, I'm simplifying my life. Less is more. I'm not feeling it. Have fun with it. Or, you know, if you have a lot of money and not a lot of time, do something like Amazon Prime and have your groceries delivered. Number four, do less. Simply stop saying yes to all your friends, 
families, neighbors, kids, commitments. If you're on every committee, drop a few. The Italians call it, and I apologize in advance if I mispronounce this, which there's a good chance that I will, il dolce far niente, which translates to the art of doing nothing. Take some time to practice that. Simply sit. Sit and enjoy the night sky, the winter night sky, or the summer if you're listening down under. Can you just be? When was the last time that you just sat, didn't do anything? You just let your mind wander. You weren't racing around, planning the next meal, planning all this. Da, 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 da. Practice the art of doing nothing. Number five, ask for support. I think, especially in American culture, we have this rugged individualism and go it alone and, you know, don't ask for support. You can take care of it. No, 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 no. Ask for support. Simplify your life. See if your in-laws can pick up the kids every day and give you some free time. Have your kids organize their room and help them with age-appropriate tasks. If you need support hashing out how to say no, hire a therapist or a professional organizer. There is nothing wrong with asking for support because people who have a skill that you perhaps don't can te teach you things and you can learn shortcuts and ways to handle things that are going to save you a ton of time. And think about all the time we spend about stewing or thinking about something. If you learn some techniques to help reduce your frustration, it's gonna help your mental clutter as well. Are you surrounded by clutter? Are you exhausted from the stress your clutter creates? Are you anxious every time you walk into your home? Do you long for peace of mind? Go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how I can support you. Number six, mindfulness practice. When you have a clear head, life becomes easier. You can really focus on what's important and let other stuff go. When you know what's important, it's easier to say no to things. It can be something like an actual meditation sitting down. It can be deep breathing. It can be doing affirmations, whatever it is. It could be simply sitting in front of an altar that you've created. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't matter what the new or latest thing is or what people are doing on TV. Do what works for you. Number seven, unplug. Don't spend all your time on social media or playing video games or watching TV. There is something on my iPad now. And I think that w when you have to do those updates or whatever that you do, it tells me how much time I spend on the iPad. And it tells me, it, uh, I need to examine it a little more, but it tells me how much time I've spent on social media, tells me if I've been productive because I have my, for example, I have Evernote on here on my iPad. I have my business email. So somehow that it's able to differentiate if I'm doing work or if I'm goofing off. Oh my gosh, it has been a great eye opener because I force myself to, to look at it and it sends me a notice every week. Oh my gosh, I spent how much? Because I really try to put my Facebook time down for a week. And I think the first time I did it, I, I think I spent in a week, five and a half hours on Facebook, which, eh, you know, that's less than an hour if you stretch it out over a week. And I tend to, so I look at cats a lot. Okay. I'm just gonna be honest on Facebook. I look at cats a lot and on Instagram, but also some of those things when I'm on Facebook, although it should be able to differentiate that. Like if someone comments on a business page, I always respond to that or an Instagram is kind of a hybrid, but this app, lets me know. And I was excited the next week it cut down the four hours. And so I'm making a game of it. How can I make sure that I'm cutting down and then limiting TV for me? So it's football season. Go Steelers. We need number seven. 
Super Bowl ring for those of you that aren't football fans. And okay, I'm going to watch football because I enjoy that, but I'm going to limit any other TV. I don't watch the news. I don't, because it's usually really bad. I will find out about something from social media, but okay, you like football and then only you're going to watch TV with your husband. We have a couple of shows we like, so let's limit it to that. When we are plugged in all the time, it can create stress, it can create mental clutter, and sometimes jealousy or feeling inadequate. They talk about how they've done studies, and I did a, another episode uh, probably two years ago on unplugging, and they talked about how you can increase your feelings of jealousy because you see all this stuff on social media, which, come on, guys, a lot of it isn't true, but it can still frustrate us. I know I'm on Facebook personally a lot less than I used to be since meeting my husband. I'm not plugged in 24 seven and I still need to be better about that, but I'm working on it. But I look to where you can unplug for this year. And then you'll probably be amazed of all the free time that you have left. Number eight, is there an app for that? Apps can really make our life easier if we get the right one. I talked about Evernote. I love that easy search capability. I have recipes that I use on Evernote. So I just start to type up the recipe I want. I make sure I have a really good headline and then tag if necessary. And, you know, Evernote's genius at that. I also use Waze. I love Waze because it can tell me if there is traffic. And if I don't check Waze, somehow I feel like I jinx myself and there'll be traffic. But it's awesome because I know ahead, okay. I can take this, and if I need to be rerouted, then it gives me that capability as well, too. I also have, I actually am a weirdo. I have like five or six weather apps on my iPad just because I like weather and I look looking at things and different apps tell different things. But like for instance, I'm finishing recording this up, and I have a meeting about 45 minutes away. So I looked at the weather app this morning. Okay. I take this, I'm going to pack an umbrella because there's a 20% chance of rain. Anyway, it just has made my life easier. If you have online banking, you can, Tony has this on his iPad. He can sign the check, boop, scan right there. Now he has direct deposit, but when, you know, he gets the occasional check, that saves a lot of time. You don't have to go to run to the bank. Number nine, simplify your wardrobe. You could do something like a capsule closet where, uh, who did I just know? I really like Soma's clothes. I have had gotten a few things. I try something out on sale. Okay, if I like it, if it's good, and I really like the clothes they had. I got a shirt, a tank on sale, and was really happy with it. And they have created, and I don't know what their term is for it. I think they might call it a capsule closet, but I'm telling you, find the right fit like black's a large part of it and it's like you know what i can wear black leggings or pants but not black does not do a good for me around my face and so they've really simplified it you could also go the steve jobs route and have a standard uniform his was jeans and a black turtleneck come up with your own standard uniform that makes life way easier if you're able to do that or just simply find pieces that work for you but have less. Like I have leopard print. I'm never getting rid of leopard print, guys. It's just not happening. That's always going to be a part of your wardrobe. And so if you can come up with pieces of something that you love just to make life easier. And number 10, write a to-do list. Now, I wasn't going to include this because I thought probably a lot of you out there who are listening and watching might be going, duh, rather loudly. And then I had a client that says, oh, it's all on top of my head. And I realize a lot of people still don't write stuff down. Now I use a legal pad and how I create my to-do list is I have my professional on one side and then in the little skinny column, my personals to do. Because one of the things that I appreciate I have flexibility. So I'm going to run an errand before I go to this meeting. I'm dropping off some packages at the post office. So I always like to combine trips, do what I can, figure that out. It just saves me time and reduces my stress. 
when I write things down, it also allows me to easily break things down. And something I might do if I have a project is, okay, step one, and then I turn to the next week and maybe we'll plan out four or five pages because that's my week to do list. And at the end, I move something that doesn't get done to the next week, but that system just works for me. You also get a sense of accomplishment when you write stuff down and you're least likely to forget it. I spaced and had a meeting with someone. This has probably never happened. They wanted to interview me on something that they're doing for a report and my husband just switched the schedule. Anyway, it wasn't written down and I was out of range and didn't get a reminder because I've switched to an electronic calendar, but because it wasn't on my to-do list, I didn't see it. So if we write down things, we probably aren't going to forget them. These are my 10 suggestions today. What ways would you choose to simplify your life? How have you simplified your life? What can you do based on your lifestyle? Take actions. Give yourself permission to simplify. Clear clutter in all areas of your life. Plan your meals. Do less. Ask for support. Commit to a mindfulness practice. Unplug. Find apps that work for you. Simplify your closet. Write a to-do list. On our next episode, we're talking about one-minute wisdom in this month's bonus episode. Go out, clear the clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Are you ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Sign up for our newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and receive a free copy of 10 Steps to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would love it if you would rate and review the show because it really helps us in the search ranking. See you next Tuesday at one o'clock. Remember, when you clear your clutter, you can create the life you desire. Thank you.